Oh! 
Good morning and welcome to the worship service of the New Albany Church of Christ. If you're visiting with us today by way of video streaming, you are very proud that you could be with us today. Uh, if you'd like to make correspond with us, uh, there are several ways to do so. Uh, you can mail us, of course, at the New Albany Church of Christ, P.O. Box 148, New Albany, Mississippi, 38652. You can also reach us on our web page. That's at uh, nacoc.us. And there's several links on that to uh, be able to reach us. Uh, with prayer requests and also uh, streaming of our, our lessons. Uh, you can also at post on our Facebook page. This is NA Church, and that's three ways that you can reach us as, as well as phone calls, of course. If you have any prayer requests, please let us know or feel free to call us, uh, any of us, at any time. Communication right now is uh, so important, so reach out uh, to us and remember the news line as well as the text messaging through the through the church uh, also remember our contributions of weekly giving should be and can be sent to the new omni church of christ p.o box 148 new omni mississippi 38652 I have a few announcements that need to be made our uh, prayer list uh, remember ron griggs he continues to be in a lot of pain following his surgery to remove his leg below the knee he is home now uh, and, but he's confined to his bed to at least April the 28th when he goes back to, for his uh, next doctor's appointment to see his surgeon. Uh, at that time, they will talk to him about uh, rehabbing and what has to go on from here. Alita Grimmett, she is uh, struggling with COPD again. Her doctors have has her on several medications. Uh, she is doing some better at this time. Uh, remember Sue Stroud, she is at home recovering from many strokes. She has someone there with her all the time. Uh, so please remember her and that family as well. Billy Joe Garner is dealing with uh, another 
urinary tract infection, so please remember him. Uh, also, we have some additions. Patty Worley, this is the cousin of Kathy Clayton, is very sick and is asking for prayers at this time. And uh, Charles Ulmer, this is a family member of the, of the Youngs. He's from Fox, Sykeston, Missouri. He's the uh, dad of Andy Ulmer, who has spoke to him to us here on uh, two different occasions. He's having some serious health issues at this time, so please pray for him and his family as well during this time. Uh, we express the sympathy to uh, Dixie White and the death of her uh, sister, Mildred Shackelford, who passed away. Please remember that prayer, uh, them in your prayers as they are going through a lot right now. Also, uh, sympathy to Gordon Gentry's uh, family who passed away this past Friday. Uh, he's the husband of Martha Beasley uh, Gentry and uh, brother-in-law of our own Ronald Beasley. So please remember uh, that family in our prayers as well. A couple of no others that we have on our sick list is Ronnie Miller. He is in the Tupelo Hospital at this time. This is the dad of Amanda Coggins. Uh, his blood had got real low. He's been at giving blood uh, on two different occasions I know of. Uh, they would be doing a colonoscopy and as, as well as some more tests this next week to find out what's causing the problem there. Also, uh, Nikki Weaver, she hasn't had a good week this week. Uh, uh, so, and they're still looking for the answers of some of these new problems that she has come up with. She will be going to Jackson Thursday for test, then follow up with her neurologist uh, in May to get the results from those tests. So please remember them in, their, in, in your prayers as well. I want to encourage everyone, all our teens, to remember that Shaler has a class on Wednesday night on Zoom. Uh, it's Wednesday evening. I think that's at 7. And if you or your friends want to be a part of that, please uh, do so. If you're having trouble finding out how to get on that or anything, please call Shaler and talk to him, and he can walk, talk you through all of that. Also, we have a Wednesday night Devo that will be posted uh, late Wednesday, every Wednesday afternoon to go along with that with our search, for our search services on Wednesday. Uh, that's all the announcements I have at this time. We'll turn the services over to uh, Philip, who will be doing our singing. Mark Jennings will be doing our scripture reading. Jason Jennings will have our opening prayer. Randy Wall will be conducting our Lord's Supper this morning. Uh, Kurt Clayton will have our closing prayer. And Shayla will bring, bring in our lesson. Philip. Good morning. We'll start out our worship service by singing number 200, Hallelujah, Praise Jehovah, number 200. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah, from the heavens praise His name. Praise Jehovah in the highest, all his angels praise proclaim. All his hosts together praise him. Sun and moon and stars on high. Praise him, O ye heaven of heavens, and ye floods above the sky. Let them praises give Jehovah, for His name alone is high, and His glory is exalted, and His glory is exalted, and His glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. Let them praises give Jehovah. They were made at His command. Them forever He established. His decree shall ever stand. From the earth, O oh, praise Jehovah, all ye flood, ye dragons all. Fire and hail and snow and vapors, stormy winds that hear Him call. Let them praises give Jehovah, 
for his name alone is high, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted for above the earth and sky. All ye fruitful trees and cedars, all ye hills and mountains high, creeping things and beast and cattle, birds that in the heavens fly, Kings of earth and all ye people, princes, great earth judges all. Praise his name, young men and maidens, aged men and children small. Let them praises give Jehovah. For his name alone is high, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted for above the earth and sky. Before we have our Lord's Supper, we're going to sing number 615, That Dreadful Night. 615. That dreadful night before His death, the Lamb for sinners slain. Did almost with his dying breath This solemn feast ordain To keep the feast, Lord, we have met And to remember Thee Help each redeemed one to repeat for me, he died for me. At this time in our services, we come and gather around the table to observe the memorial feast, the sacrifice that Christ made for us. We ask that you'll please erase all thoughts from your mind at this time. Concentrate on Christ and the sacrifice that was made on our behalf. The sacrifice that overwhelms us as to how much love they, that Christ has for us and, and the meaning of it. We are in a time in our lives where there's a lot of unsettlement and we are so thankful that we have our Lord and Savior that we can lean on and go to in these times. And the sacrifice that was made on our behalf on that cross that on Calvary that Christ died. We're so thankful for the life that He lived. And let's always remember and take this sacrifice to our hearts. And at this time, let's observe this sacrifice. Will you bow with me? Our Heavenly Father, we come to You in prayer now, giving You thanks for all the many things that You have blessed us with this world that we live in. But the most important thing, we are so thankful for you sending your Son to die on our stead that we may have 
hope of the forgiveness of our sins and life eternal with thee if we obey thy commandments. Lord, we turn now to the sacrifice that Christ made on that cross and we partake of this bread which to Christians represents Christ's body that was on that cross in that sacrificial sacrifice. Lord, help us to be mindful of that and partake of this bread in a way and manner that would be pleasing in thy sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Will you bow with me again? Our Heavenly Father, as we continue to remember this sacrifice that Thou made and gather around this table, may we partake of this fruit, which represents the blood that was shed at that sacrifice. Lord, we are so thankful and mindful of it. Help us to partake of this that will be pleasing in thy sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. That concludes the Lord's Supper. Now at this time, we will observe the commandment of giving. Would you bow with me? Our Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer once again, giving you thanks for this beautiful day you have blessed us with. All the many blessings that we have, the jobs that we have, the food that we have, the ability to provide for our families, Lord, we know we are in stressful times right now and we have you to lean on and to trust that we will get through these times, that all will be well. Lord, that if you will merely take care of the birds in the air, that we know that all will be provided for us if we do thy will. Praise thee and follow thy commandments. Lord, we now want to return a portion back to Thee that we can further Thy kingdom here. Help us to do so in cheerful hearts and help us to give freely that we can continue to work here. We thank You for everything that You've done for us and we love You. In Christ's name we pray, amen. At this time, let's sing number 205, Hand in Hand with Jesus, 205, singing the first, second, and fourth verse. Once from my poor sin-sick soul, Christ did every burden roll. Now I walk redeemed and whole, hand in hand with Jesus. Hand in hand we walk each day, hand in hand along the way. Walking thus I will not stray, hand in hand with Jesus. In my night of dark despair, Jesus heard and answered prayer. 
Now I'm walking free as air, hand in hand with Jesus. Hand in hand we walk each day, hand in hand along the way. Walking thus I will not stray, hand in hand with Jesus. When the stars are backward rolled, and His home I shall behold, I will walk those streets of gold, hand in hand with Jesus. Hand in hand we walk each day, hand in hand along the way. Walking thus I will not stray, hand in hand with Jesus. Good morning. If you'd like to take your Bibles and turn to chap Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Matthew 6, verse 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Would you pray with me? Dear gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace and mercy this morning, thanking you for the, another good day that you have blessed us with a day that was not promised to us. Lord, we thank you for this good Lord's day that we can come and, and worship together, even though it's not how we normally worship, Lord. We just thank you for the opportunities that we can still worship you. Lord, we're just so thankful for the opportunities like this. Lord, we help us to always remember that the church is not this building, it's the people. Lord, help us to focus on you and others while we worship, Lord, that we may worship in spirit and in truth. Lord, we pray for, for the church here in New Albany and the church of the world over. We pray for strength during this time. We pray for growth in the future. Lord, we pray for our elders and our deacons for the work and they have to do and the decisions that they make. Lord, we, we pray for them. Lord, we're so thankful for Shaler coming our way and his ability and his willingness to to step in and fill in our pulpit at this time. Lord, we're so thankful for him. We pray that he will have a ready recollection of things that he is prepared to say here this morning and present them in a way and manner that will be well pleasing to you and we, we can take them out and apply them to our everyday walks of life. Lord, we wanna pray for this country at this time during this virus. Lord, we pray that uh, it will come to an end very soon. Lord, all those that have been affected by it can return to a, their normal places in life, Lord, going about uh, having some normalcy. Lord, now we pray for those that are sick in any way. Lord, just put your healing hand upon them and return them to a better portion of your health. Lord, we, we pray for our doctors and nurses and our first responders. Lord, we're so thankful for them, their willingness to continue to do their work and put themselves in harm's way during this time. Lord, just protect them as only you can. Lord, we want to pray for this country and uh, our leaders. Pray for peace. Lord, we pray for our leaders. They will look to you for wisdom and guidance for everything they do, that they would put you first in their lives. Lord, we pray for our law enforcement and our military. Lord, as they go about defending our freedoms of this country and protecting our laws. Lord, just protect them as they go about doing their jobs. Lord, give their families comfort as they're gone. Lord, most of all, we want to thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as he died upon that cruel cross of Calvary, that we may have a hope of an eternal life with thee in heaven someday. Lord, just thank you for loving us, and thank you for Jesus and Christ, and we pray. Amen.
this time we'll sing number 419, Lord, We Come Before Thee Now, 419. I will be singing all four verses. Lord, we come before Thee now, at Thy feet we humbly bow. O oh, do not our suit disdain, shall we seek Thee, Lord, in vain? Shall we seek Thee, Lord, in vain? Lord, on Thee our souls depend, in compassion now descend. Fill our hearts with Thy rich grace, tune our lips to sing Thy praise. Tune our lips to sing Thy praise. In Thine own appointed way, now we seek Thee, here we stay. Lord, we know not how to go till a blessing Thou bestow, till a blessing Thou bestow. Grant that all may seek and find the a God supremely kind. Heal the sick, the captive free. Let us all rejoice in Thee. Let us all rejoice in Thee. Our song of invitation today will be number 347. Jesus is calling. One thing that parents have to be careful of is to not be too controlling with their children. Some parents, you know, really try to make sure that they, their kids don't do anything wrong. Some parents can be more laid back or relaxed, but one thing that's tough is you don't know whether to let them go and to make mistakes, but you want to keep them in line. You don't want to give, put them in situations that, they, that you know they're going to mess up in, and it's hard to find that line because sometimes if you try to control your children, they resent you and they won't like you for it, and then they'll just do anything to make you mad and upset and go the opposite of what you think. But you know, as a parent, you can't just let your child do anything that you want. And I think about back when I was a teenager, with my parents. I was very blessed to have two great parents, two parents that stayed together, that loved each other, that always loved us and put us first or put us before themselves. And I think back and my parents weren't very controlling. They were always laid back and relaxed and they always let me go out and do things because they always trusted me. They knew that I would never put myself in situations I couldn't handle. And because of that, I never wanted to do anything wrong. I never wanted to mess up because they trusted me and cared for me. They knew that I wouldn't, so I never did. But I think of one situation back when I was a teenager where I thought my parents were a little controlling. I was a junior in high school, and I had become the main pitcher for our baseball team. And, on sun and we always had our area games on Monday. And since I was the number one pitcher, I, always, I would always pitch that first area game. And it was always on Monday afternoon. Well, on Sunday nights, my best friends were in the youth group, and we would always want to go do things on Sunday night. We'd want to stay out late whether it was going coon hunting, just hanging out at McDonald's, going to each other's houses, whatever it was, going swimming. We always wanted to do different things. But well, once area started happening, my dad said, son, I think on Sunday nights you just need to come home after church. And me being a junior in high school, that just fired me up and made me so mad because I just wanted to go out and I just wanted to have fun. And he said, look, you're the number one pitcher for your baseball team, they're counting on you. If you go out and you stay out late, you know, you might not be able to perform like you need to, and you're not, you might not be able to win. Well, at that time, I thought, you know, I was a junior in high school. I was invincible. I could go all night and not have to sleep at all and then go out there and still pitch. Or, you know, I thought, what does it matter? I mean, are sports really that important? 
But I came home and I was mad and I'd go to bed early that night. And it turned out that every all three of those area games, I pitched some of the best games of my life. And I think back to those moments now and I'm so thankful because my dad not only cared about me and cared about our team, but he thought about my future and he knew how much I cared about baseball. And making those tough parent decisions are sometimes hard. But with this morning, I want us to think about the word control. The word control. During this time, this is a word that has been on my mind because I just feel like I have no control over my life, over different things that are happening, worrying about different situations that are coming, and you know everything has just changed. And you know, I, I you know, you, I planned, you know, we planned for this to happen during this semester, and you know, I plan to be student teaching right now, and for all this to be happening but it all just got taken away and you, we can just feel like we don't have any control of anything. And we think about the world. And if you see the PowerPoint, there's a picture of the wor- picture of the globe, picture of the world, and on top of it it has the word control with a question mark. And the reason I put that is because you think about our lives on earth, our worldly lives, do we have any control? Do we really have control. It's kind of ironic. I plan to talk about this for a while. And this past weekend, Madison and I were moving our washer and dryer into our house. And we had kind of an older dryer, but we didn't want to have to buy one. You know, if it would work, we were going to stick with it. And we got to the house and the dryer cord is the, the plug in into the house is a four prong. And of course, this dryer had a three prong cord. So we had to go to the store. We had to buy a four prong cord to switch it out. Well, when we took the back off and I was going to switch it out, the wires had been electric taped. And I don't know who did that, but they had been electric taped. And it took hours to get all those pieces of tape off. And I just had to, Madison and I just had to sit there and pull and pull and pull. Well, finally we got all of it off and all the bolts and the screws had corroded. And they were just rusted. And I tried to unscrew them, that way I could replace the wire. And once I unscrewed them, the wires just snapped. So we didn't know what to do. Madison's grandparents came yesterday and we asked her granddad, you know, what do you think we need to do? And they wanted us to get a new one anyway. So we said, all right, we're going to go. We got a new one. So yesterday we had to go get a new dryer. You think about a situation, you know, there was nothing I could do to control that situation. You know, we had planned. We had a washer and dryer. We're just going to put it in. And then just within a few seconds, all of our plans had to change. This morning, literally right before I was going to give this sermon, I go to get in the shower and I turn the shower on, let it run for a few seconds, and I jump right in. And the water is ice cold, freezing cold. And I immediately jumped out of the shower and I was so mad. I stuck my hand in and the water wasn't warming up at all and it was just staying ice cold. And I had no idea what to do. So I went to the breaker and I looked and for some reason the breaker switch was just stuck in the middle. So it wasn't on. So I turned it off and turned it back on. But the, there's no telling how long it had been like this, so it didn't have time for the, hot weed, the, for the hot water to heat up. So I had to take a freezing cold shower and be late this morning. And I think back in high school, me and a buddy were going to a basketball game, and we were driving. Back then, I drove a 97 Silverado, and we were on the way. Everything is fine. There's nothing wrong with the truck. Then all of a sudden, I see the RPM, and it's just up high, and my truck's not going like it should. And I had no idea what it was, so I had to go. We went about 15 miles an hour because it would stay down. We did that, and we had to go all the way back home about 15 miles an hour. And I got back home, and then we realized it was the transmission went out. And so we took it to the place, and we asked, you know, what happened? Why did this happen? And the man said, well, there's these models truck and these transmission. Once you hit this certain amount of miles, that's just going to happen to it. Another situation that we couldn't control. And I'm sure everybody can think of situations where they just can't control what happens. You know, you can buy a brand new car with the best things, and then you can drive down the road and hit a nail and have a flat tire. You can work out, you can eat healthy, and you can do all these great things for your body, but then cancer can just come, or heart disease can come. All kinds of different bad situations can just come. You can try to control your kids, but some situations just get way out of hand. A coach can can try, to, can, can, can try to control his football team or whatever kind of team it is, and they can practice this thing and practice and practice, and he can tell them over and over and over, 
But then once the game comes, it's out of the coach's control and the player can just do it completely wrong. The reason I put a question mark above the world is because we really don't have control in this world. We don't have control of our earthly things. You know, our house, something bad can happen with our house. Our cars, something bad can happen in our cars. The school systems, our jobs, so many different things can happen that are completely out of our control. And people always teach, you know, control what you can control. Worry about that. There's just some things that are out of your control. But one thing that is encouraging is that God is the one that has control over the world. You know, we sing the VBS song, He's got the whole world in His hands. And that's the picture that's here in the PowerPoint. He's got the whole world in His hands. And we sing that fun VBS song, but I think sometimes we forget about it. Sometimes we think this world is about us and what we want to do and what we want to enjoy and what we want to have. And all these things are taken away from us and we don't have any control. But God is the one that has control over the world. It's His world. It's not ours. It's about Him. He's the one that makes the decisions. He's the one that can do what He wants to do. God is all supreme, all powerful. So the question is, what do we control? What is it that we control? And I thought about making different points for this, talking about you know, your attitude, your heart, your actions, but I just want to have one point, and it's simple. What do we control? We control our spiritual lives. That is one thing that nobody else has control over. God helps us in our spiritual lives and He provides for us, but we are the ones that are in control of our own soul, of our own spiritual life. If you have a Bible, open up to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. It says, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of time, because the days are evil. It says, be careful how you walk, meaning the way that you live when you go into the world, be careful how you do that, doing it in the right way because the time, making the best use of your time because the days are evil. One thing that we for sure do not have control over is time. And I bet that's one thing a lot of people wish they could control is time. Some people would love to, for things to just slow down or to be able to go back, but time just goes by so fast. And it seems like we just don't have any control over it. And we have to make sure that our spiritual lives are taken care of because we don't control the time, but we control how we live during the time. It says, Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Give me thanks always and for everything to the God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. You know, we don't get to control that we're not getting to be here this morning. I mean, we could all decide to come here, but that probably wouldn't be very smart. And honestly, the church might get in trouble for it, and we might have a lot of health issues. So it just feels like things are out of our, our control. But what's important about worship is never going to be out of control. And that's how we do it. That's how we feel about it, the things that we do. It tells us to be careful how we walk and because the days are evil and to live in the right way. But then notice what it says. It says, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Our singing wasn't the same this morning as it always is, but we still got to sing. We got, you got to control what was in your heart. That wasn't taken away. Then it says, give me thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, we still got to take, take the Lord's Supper and to thank Jesus for everything that He did, to thank God for what He did. And it says, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Things aren't the same. We're not going to be around each other as much as we want to, but we can still submit to one another and still serve one another, still love one another. Texts can happen. Phone calls can happen. Different things can happen to where we still can love each other and reach out to each other. Now, if you have a Bible, open up to 2 Timothy Chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. It says, But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unpeaceable, 
unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. There's one thing that I tell the teens over and over and over and over, and they're probably going to get, they probably already got tired of hearing it. They're going to get tired of hearing it, but I don't care. I'll tell it to them till I can't tell it no more. And that is that they have control of their attitude. I said, you're the one that controls your attitude. You control what you say. You control how you live. Sure, other people can have an influence, and sure, different things can happen that can influence, but it's still up to you to decide what you do. And when things are going to get tough, there's going to be people that could have all these different things that we just read about. But you're the one that controls if you do or if you don't. No one else. Nothing can take that away. You control it yourself. One thing that's tough is, you know, we can't control other people. You know, we can tell people about Jesus and we can tell people what he's done and we can try to convince people to go to the church. But it's up to them to make that decision to control their salvation. You know, as a youth minister, when I teach class, whether it's here or through Zoom or whatever it is, you know, I can't con- can't make the teenagers do what I say or take the advice or listen to the Scripture and hear what the Scripture says and do it. You know, I can't make them. I can't control it. You know, whenever a preacher preaches, he can't control the church and actually make them apply the things that have been said. You can't control other people, but you can control yourself. I can control the way that I live. I can control the things that I say. And if I live in the way that I should and do the things that I should, maybe I can help have an influence on other others. I can't control them, but I can help influence them. If I were to ask you this morning, what are some things you wish you had complete control of? What are some things you wish you had complete control of? I'm sure some there's a lot of things that a lot of people wish they had complete control of. You know, one thing about about with me about to be married i just wish i could have control of my financial situation you know making sure student loans were taken care of and everything i always was able to help pay the bills and help take care of the family in the future you know there's certain things we wish we can control you know control certain people you know parents wish they could make sure their kids always do what they should to do what's right there's a lot of things that you might be able to list but at number one on that list at the top one thing that you wish you control could control is whether or not you get to go to heaven. And the great thing is, the most important thing that you wish you can control, you get to control. You have complete control of whether you go to heaven or not. Sure, certain things might influence it, but it's all up to you. God is going to judge each one of us one day, individually. He's going to look at me and He's going to look at all of you based on the way that you've lived, based on the things that you've done. Everything has been taken care of. God has control over the world. After Jesus died, He said, All authority on heaven and on earth has been given to Me. Jesus took control of everything. He took control of the world. He took control of sin. He took control of the devil. But He didn't control us because we have to decide to live like we should. And this morning, when you think about control, I want you to think about the Scripture reading that we read this morning. It said that you can't love or that you can't have two masters because you either love one or hate the other. And you think about what you try to control and the things that you spend so much time and effort on, and ultimately what you try to control is what's going to end up controlling you. If you, control, if you try to control your financial situation or the worldly things so much, if that's all you try to control, then eventually it's going to control you and it's going to make every, it's going to make every decision for you in your life. If people are around, if you try to control them, control the way you are around them, and make sure that you're doing exactly what you think you should do around them, whether it's in a good way or bad way, that's what's going to take control of you. But if we spend our lives just focused on what we can control, our spiritual lives, then that's what's going to control us. Whatever we control is what's going to control you. As we've seen this invitation song, and as this week goes on, I know we can't offer a normal invitation and we can't do things in a normal way, but things are still in our control. We can still put Jesus on in baptism. That's still in your control. You can still reach out to the elders or reach out to a deacon or reach out to me and ask for forgiveness for sins. Certain things have been taken away and it can feel like we don't have any control, but all the things that we really should care about controlling are still in our control.
Jesus is calling, calling, calling. Jesus is calling today. Why should I linger, linger, linger? I will arise and away. They are so happy, happy, happy. Who do their Savior obey? Why should I linger, linger, linger? I will arise and away. Jesus is pleading, pleading, pleading. Why should I wander in sin? While to His glory, 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 Glad He would welcome me in. They are so happy, happy, happy. Who do their Savior obey? Why should I linger, linger, linger? I will arise and away. Jesus is waiting, waiting, waiting. Open now standeth the door. Soon the night falleth, falleth, falleth. Closed are the gates evermore. They are so happy, happy, happy. Who did their Savior obey? Why should I linger, linger, linger? I will arise and away. We thank you for joining in, streaming our service with us this morning. We hope you're all doing well, and we hope you can join us again next Sunday. At this time, we'll have a closing prayer. Let us go to our Father in prayer. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to study another portion of your word to the Lord. And we thank you for Shaler and his ability to bring us a lesson that we can understand and apply to our lives and understand that we are in control of our own spiritual gifts, dear Lord. We thank you for the many blessings that you've given us. Dear Lord, we ask you this morning that you be the sick of this congregation and bring them back to their normal places in life. We ask the ones that, uh, that you be with the ones who have lost loved ones, especially Miss Dixie White and her time of sorrow. And comfort, comfort that family and all families that have lost in this recent time, dear Lord. We ask you forgive us of our many sins and dear Lord, we ask that you bring us back to our normal studies, dear Lord, as soon as this pandemic is over. And be with the doctors and our first responders, dear Lord, and as they combat that virus, dear Lord. Forgive us when we do wrong, dear Lord, and bring us back to the next appointed time. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.